Hey guys, welcome back to this channel, and I hope you're all having a great day. Today I'm very excited to show you a game played by Bobby Fischer against Danish Grandmaster Ben Larsen. This game was played in the 1958 Interzonal Tournament in Potoroz, uh, Slovenia. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So in this game, Fischer was only 15 years old, and he showed us uh, why it, it is very dangerous for Black to play the Sicilian Dragon, especially at an elite level. That is why you don't see many uh, players playing the Sicilian Dragon nowadays. So in this game, Fischer starts with e4, Ben Larsen plays the Sicilian defense, but more specifically, he goes for the dragon variation. So here, g6 from Ben Larsen, the drag, uh, going for the dragon variation. Bishop to e3, bishop to g7, f3, castles, so pretty standard, standard moves, queen to d2, knight to c6, bishop to c4. Here the main move for black is knight to e5. And after something like bishop to b3, black's idea is to play bishop d7, rook to c8, and eventually get in knight to c4, which is quite a common idea in the Sicilian. And that helps to eliminate white's light square bishop because normally white doesn't want to part with this important dark square bishop. Sorry. So here we have, instead of knight to e5, we have knight takes d4 from Larsen. Fischer plays bishop takes d4, and here bishop to e6. Fischer drops the bishop back, bishop to b3. Here bishop takes e6 is also possible, but Fischer didn't want to allow black to have more pawns in the center. So here Larsen plays queen to a5, uh, which connects his rooks, preparing to swing his rooks over to the queen side because that is uh, most likely where white is going to castle. But queen to a5 also uh, with possibilities of uh, defending black's king in the future because this queen could possibly swing over to the king side. Uh, here are white castles and we have b5 from Larsen, so already uh, preparing a pawn storm on the queen side. King to b1 from Fischer, a good prophylactic move, gets the, the king out of the c file gives more protection to a2 and moves like knight to d5 are now threatened by white which would open up an attack on the queen and also an attack on the pawn at e7. Here b4 from uh, Larsen, knight to d5, we have bishop takes, bishop takes, and here Larsen should have played knight takes d5 which would simplify the position. But instead of this, uh, he chose to play rook a to c8, which keeps more tension in the position. So now Fischer gladly drops the bishop back, bishop to b3. This bishop is a very important piece for white, because it looks uh, along this deadly diagonal. So does this bishop. Here we have rook to c7, so black is intending to double rooks on the c-file. H4 from Fischer, so he starts his uh, pawn storm on the king side. Queen to b5, making room for this a pawn. We have h5, rook f to c8. Here, if uh, black were to capture, then this would be quite disastrous after something like bishop takes, and if king takes, well, knight takes would fall into this queen to h6. And if uh, you try to block the checkmate on h7, simply g4. So here king takes g7, and here after g4, knight to f6, queen check, king to g8. Here you simply push g5, and after knight h5, rook takes, g takes. Well, it is a very long variation, but basically uh, black would end up getting in serious trouble after g6. And after pawn takes, queen takes king to h8, well this is soon going to be checkmate. So here, uh, after h5, uh, black shouldn't capture the pawn with his knight, instead he played rook f to c8. We have pawn takes g6, h takes g6, and here g4. So the other pawn is rolling up the board. a5 from Larsen, g5, knight to h5, and here Fischer goes for uh, an exchange sacrifice which is very typical today in the dragon. Rook takes h5, g takes h5, and here uh, instead of taking the rook, 
black could have tried bishop takes d4. And after queen takes d4, g takes h5. Here, white is done an exchange, but he has good compensation with moves like g6 and rook g1 or rook to h1 coming for white. And black's best defense would probably be rook to c5, trying to defend laterally on the fifth rank. Here, instead of bishop takes, g takes h5 from Larsen. So Fisher plays g6, taking advantage of this pin. We have e5 from Larsen, and here Fisher could have played a uh, queen to g5. Uh, and the idea is that pawn takes bishop is impossible because this queen would be on pre. White has moves like rook to g1 coming, and he would be threatening pawn takes, followed by queen takes g7. But instead of this, Fisher plays g takes f7. Which is also a strong move. King to f8. Here we have bishop to e3. So with ideas of bishop to h6. And also uh, this opens up an attack on the pawn on d6. Larsen plays d5. We have pawn takes here. If bishop takes, then this pawn is no longer defended. That allows black to have some counterplay after rook takes c2. Queen to e1, then here queen to e2. So looking at looking at this pawn and also offering a queen exchange. So here black would be okay. So Fisher plays e takes d5, not allowing black any chances. And here if uh, a4, which would trap this bishop, simply d6 from white. So here Larsen plays rook takes f7. D6 from Fisher, opening up an attack on this rook. Rook to f6, bishop to g5, and here if black were to move the rook, then he would get mated after bishop to e7, king to e8, d7 check. King takes, here you promote, rook takes, and queen takes d8 is checkmate. So here Larsen plays queen to b7, Fisher plays bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, d7, Rook to d8, and here uh, white has uh, two ways of winning this uh, immediately. One is queen to h6, and queen to d6. Queen to h6 is a little quicker after king to e7. Queen to h7 check, bishop g7, queen takes, g7 is checkmate. Fisher plays queen to d6 check, which also wins as well. And it was in this position that Bent Larsen resigned the game because, uh, well, this is just forced checkmate after king g7, rook to g1, king h7, queen takes f6, so queen g7 mate is threatened, so black would have to play queen takes d7, queen takes g6, king to h8, queen takes h5, queen blocks, here you take on e5 with check, queen g7, then this is checkmate. A brilliant game played by uh, the 15-year-old Robert James Fisher. This is one of his games in his books, My 60 Memorable Games. And this is just one of uh, the instances where Fisher refutes the Sicilian dragon, which is probably why you don't see it much today at the top level. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, please subscribe for more future content. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.